That's right. Uh, five Indian states voters in five Indian states have cast their votes with Rajasthan and Telangana today rounding up what's been a busy election season. At the end of which, what will emerge is a picture of whether India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi stands a good chance of being elected back to power in the 2019 elections or not. That's what the world is watching from India. These state assembly elections of five states and the results of which will help us get an answer that's closer to the reality as ever as possible. We have the poll of polls for three of those five states that have gone to elections. Let's begin with the biggest of them all, that is Madhya Pradesh. 230 uh, state assembly seats. Uh, keep in mind, all these five states put together have 83 seats in the, uh, in the 2019 general elections. And across these exit polls, if you see barely anything of a difference between the BJP and the Congress, one says 111, 13, 94, 126, 118, 105, and 126, 89. That's the range we're looking at over here. This is the poll of polls. BJP, 112, Congress Party, 108, others, 10. That's the status as far as biggest state that has gone to polls this time around. Madhya Pradesh, with 230 seats is concerned. Let's move on to the next big state that we're talking about here on our exit polls, poll of polls. The next state is Rajasthan, and we also have Chhattisgarh along with that. Let's now to also tell you what Madhya Pradesh is going to mean, because Shivrat Singh Chauhan, uh, who's the chief minister of Madhya Pradesh, is... Uh, been chief minister for three terms. Three terms. That's what we're talking about over here. Will he come back to power? If he does, very little separating his performance in the state elections from Mr. Narendra Modi's performance in the Gujarat state elections. Let's now wrap up Madhya Pradesh and move on to the next round of election. That's Rajasthan again. Uh, another state where we've seen uh, Vasundra Raje emerge as chief minister two times over, but it's also a state where we've seen voters being heavily impacted by the anti-incumbency factor. Every single election you've seen, the governments change, the parties change. This is the exit polls for Rajasthan, 200 seats in the state assembly, that is. You've seen four polls that go 63-130 BJP Congress to 85-105. We also have 93-130. This state seems to be tipping over to the Congress. At least that's what the poll of polls says. 80 for the BJP, 109 for the Congress Party, and 10 for others. Rajasthan is going to be a crucial state for both BJP and Congress. As far as Chhattisgarh goes, again, a very popular Chief Minister, Dr. Raman Singh, and uh, he has been in power for quite a while again with the BJP, but this is what the exit polls say. 26, 60, 52, 35, 44, 40, and 46, 35. Very little except for that. India Today access to my India poll, which gives a huge difference between the BJP and the Congress. Not much separating, very little, especially this one, which is 44-40, the Junkie Bath poll, and this one is 46-35. If you take the poll of polls of Chhattisgarh, you'll get this. And that's what I'm talking about. 42 for the BJP, 43 for the Congress Party, and five others. That's how close it is. That's three of the biggest states. I'm gonna to go to a smaller state, the newest state of India, that is Telangana. It's a very interesting state because BJP is after point a sideshow in the state. It's all about the TRS, the Telangana Rashtriya Samiti, and the Mahakutami or the Mahagadbandan of the Telangana state that involves Congress and the Telangana, Telangana Jana Samiti. This is what the three of the exit polls say so far. Latest numbers of the exit polls coming out over here. BJP 2, Congress Party 27, TRS 85. That's the difference we're talking about over here. 5, 41, 65, 7, 37, 66. All exit polls across the board giving the Telangana Rashtriya Samiti a huge advantage over every other party. Congress, a distant second, BJP, barely there. But what's also important to note here is that uh, whatever the BJP does could split the votes between this Mahakutami and the Telangana Rashtriya Samiti, the incumbent government that is looking to come back to power. That is Telangana, 119 seats out of which TRS is likely to pick up 70 seats. The other state we're talking about is Mizoram. Mizoram is a state where BJP, the government at the center, the ruling party at the center is a known player, lesser than Telangana. And in Mizoram, we have a situation where you have parties uh, you know, coming to power and whether that will affect Prime Minister Modi's chances of coming back to power in the year 2019 or not is a big question. But net net, all these numbers that you just put out for you mean a lot. But what do they mean? 
to understand that, we have a very special panel joining us tonight on World is One. I'm going to take this across uh, to my colleague, Kartike Sharma, who is joining us here, our political editor, Kartike Sharma, here joining us here in the studios. We also have Walter K. Anderson joining us. We also have uh, Daniel Francis joining us uh, on this uh, very special poll of polls. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking time out to be with us over here. Well, 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 interesting set of numbers, Kartikeya. I know you are busy number crunching on that laptop of yours over there, but I really have to ask you, semi-finals, semi-finals, semi-finals. This looks like a tiebreaker of a semi-finals. You know, it tells us three things. The first thing is that after 2014, Congress had never been in fight in any of the states. Perhaps it gave a bit of a fight in Gujarat, it gave a bit of a fight in Karnataka. But it was not a, a fight where people would say that, well, you know, I think the Congress is going to do, uh, go for a kill in Gujarat, it's going to win in Karnataka. Now, what's happening in the battle for the five states, because we have also Mizoram in Northeast, uh, it's the first time that though the exit polls may be giving divergent uh, data, because it's ultimately the interpretation also, on who's going to win, but for the first time you find Congress in a close fight with Bharti Janta Party. So that is one important takeaway. So when we talk about BJP in Congress, we are practically talking about Rahul Gandhi and Narendra Modi. Yes. So first time uh, there is a fight. And second, though, the data on the Mizoram is not out, it's a small state, but the, consequ the, the consequence of the victory there, or the loss for both the parties is important if Congress retains, that will be the only state Congress will have in northeast of India. Yeah. If Congress loses that state to Bharti Janta Party, that perhaps a tribal, ethnically different, Christian majority, seven sisters, will become Congress Muk Bharat. That's one. And lastly, uh, the data in itself is suggesting a lot of things, you know. For me, the biggest takeaway for, of this data is that the, for the first time in 15 years, Congress has given fight in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh from 2003 onwards, Congress was not giving fight. It was only fighting elections. Right. Daniel Francis, I was talking to Kartike just before we began the show, he was talking about uh, this, this fight that he's talking about of the Congress. It's sort of like the green sprouts of revival, uh, you know, of the Congress party, which many thought was done and dusted after the, whatever has been the results in state elections so far. Yeah, you know, after 2014, uh, <clears throat> we have seen uh, a steady decline of Congress in the states. Uh, after Gujarat elections, we really saw that the Congress was in the reckoning, uh, which a fight was led by Rahul Gandhi himself. Uh, nobody expected that in these, in, particularly in, in um, uh, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, that the Congress could uh, give that perception that it is going to give a very good fight mm. and be in the race. Mm. But uh, with uh, the kind of exit polls that are now coming, uh, I really feel that uh, the fight that the Congress leaders and the Congress workers and individual candidates have given at the state level, particularly without having a CM face in both these states, is uh, remarkable. Uh, with, with the poll of polls, I can only make one observation. Unlike uh, the last five years, we media has not been able to predict a clear victory for BJP, you know. Most importantly, they would, uh, you know, they would give that you know, phenomenal campaign by Prime Minister, great... Absolutely. Uh, We've seen it happen even in Gujarat state elections. Couple of exit polls did mention, Kartikeya, that, uh, you know, BJP was going to win in Gujarat, although it was far more closer than what many would have anticipated. You know, actually, you know, this, you know, this brings in uh, Dr. Anderson here, you know, Krishna, he has written the book on RSS. And the whole issue is, after 2014, RSS came as a formidable ma political machine under Bharti Janta Party. You know, every election the talk would be that the RSS has been deployed and yes. they have delivered the state. So, this time also, in the five states, you know, which has become s sort of very presidential between Rahul Gandhi and uh, Narendra Modi, it also brings in the biggest organization in this country, which is RSS. The densest, the biggest, and the Absolutely. most organized. Walter, would you care to weigh in on it? It's interesting as I look at these figures because the RSS people told me at the most senior levels that they were not going to repeat the support that they had given in 2014 hmm. for Narendra Modi. Uh, but then they felt they had to because it was a kind of do or die because they thought there would be restrictions on their activities. After that, though, people kept telling me and very senior members of the RSS that they're not going to have that same kind of support. However, I'm now hearing 
that they are in fact beginning to give that support. Just in the last two weeks in Rajasthan, the RSS has been, has been organizing meetings, and the RSS is rather dense in Rajasthan, hmm. and in and, and which they're trying to, uh, telling their people, you know, get out the vote. Uh, they, they, they've got uh, booth level groups that they're working with from the BJP, which, which Amit Shah has organized. So they're, they're actually going all out in Rajasthan. I don't know as much as in Madhya Pradesh because, as you saw in the figures, it's not as desperate, mm. and even though they're slightly behind. That's, mm. uh, that's one thing mm. about the RSS and the BJP. Well, there is another one. The outcome of these elections will have an effect on the internal power equations in the BJP. Mm. Um, and if, those, if the chief ministers, and there are three BJP chief ministers, don't do well, that's going to undermine them and might even undermine in some ways uh, Narendra Modi, but that's another issue. Um, the other thing to, uh, that's interesting about these is in, in the, the big states, is actually quite close, mm. except maybe Rajasthan. But even there, I'm not quite sure if the divisions are as, as major as you make them out to be. But whatever, the divisions are close, and you can have a two or three point popular vote difference, and you can have actually a significant seat difference. So a lot depends. Which way? Uh, either way. It, you know, it, it depends, you know, because you, you've had in the last few years in India, in fact, in some of these states, the actual vote has been relatively close. Mm -hmm. And But in these three states, it went to the side of the BJP, but not always. In, in other elections, it's gone the other way around. So that's the other thing, just a slight shift depending on events that happen, like, what is it, the, the arrest of this man who, you know, uh, who was involved with the, with the helicopter deal. It's become, yes, Agu it's the Augusta a, Westland. It's become stuff. a big thing. You know, it's events like this that could maybe shift one way or the other. It's hard to tell at this point, you know, what events they'll be, but politics, you know, is very sensitive to these sorts of events. And it's Absolutely. hard to predict how it's going to affect the voter, but, and particularly when it's so close. Hmm. You know, an event like this can shift one way or the other. When the raids took place today, uh, son-in-law of Sonia Gandhi, Robert hmm. Badra, hmm. as the voting was taking place, the raids took place in Delhi. But you know, I have a small point to make here. You know, these results and the way election has uh, been fought is telling us that the BJP is mimicking Congress, and the Congress today looks like Bharti Janta Party of 2009. And I'm just keeping it at a very macro level for reason. You know, if you would remember uh, L.K. Advani trying to get hold of the uh, Bharti Janta Party, people would have at that point have said it's an amalgamation of chief ministers, Narendra Modi, Shivraj Singh Chauhan, Raman mm. Singh, Vasundra Raja Sindhya. It's all about powerful chief ministers. Mm. And Congress was all about the so-called the Indian way of putting it, the high command culture. But today, the reverse has happened. You have pa Congress is trying to project powerful chief ministers and it does not have that strong high command anymore. Mm. So, you know, with time, you know, in the last four and a half years, uh, basic, I, I would say, things uh, or the principles of both the parties have changed over time. But I think he made a very uh, important point that the silent player in mm. this election in the last seven days has been RSS, you know. Uh, there is an acknowledgement that though it says it's confined to culture, but it is the biggest political party. That's true. That's and that's a big revelation coming in in terms of you know shifting sands of time from 2014 to 2018. A lot has obviously uh, changed. But we're having this discussion, ladies and uh, gentlemen, because at the end of the day, this was always hyped up as the semi-finals to 2019. Because mm. this is at the end of the day a pit stop to 2019. We're discussing that. Mm. Absolutely. You know, about if uh, if we go uh, just take some cue from from uh, the past. In uh, 2003, when the same elections were held and the BJP won uh, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, it gave uh, a, some kind of a boost to the Vajpayee government. Mm. Instead of having the elections in October 20, 2004, mm. they uh, had it in May 2004, thinking that there's a way uh, that's in, in their wave way, way in their favor. Mm. Uh, in 2009 and 2014, Again, uh, they repeated that kind of um, uh, performances. One does not really know that if this is going to be a semi-final or not. Uh, it totally depends on the party that is in opposition. If, imagine Congress gains Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan. How they capitalize and how the message really goes. Or if Narendra Modi is able to reverse the message in case they don't win these seats. Or capitalize on the message in case they retain uh, these three states so completely depending on what will really who will take what kind of advantage of the situation i have a question for dr anderson 
are these elections, the results, more important for Narendra Modi or for Rahul Gandhi? <laughs> the fair question. It's a hard question to answer because it's important to both of them. Um, for the Congress, over and above Rahul Gandhi, for the Congress, it's important because whether or not that they can get coalitions mm. in 2019 will depend on how well the Congress can do now. And the same might be the, the, true for the BJP and Modi. To what extent that they can get coalitions will depend, and they may need a coalition government because the, the consensus is the BJP will not get a majority on its own, mm. and therefore it's going to need allies. So a lot, a lot of the success of it getting allies will depend on what's happening right now on the ground and in will these that elections. In a sense, will that, in a sense, all the, the coalition maneuvering that BJP would be entailed to do with this semi-final elections, would it, do you think, uh, sort of help it or add to it come 2019? In that sense, if it is in uh, the communication line between BJP and so many parties are open, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. it comes, if things get closed in 2019, then this sort of would be a, a practice ground for BJP to brace itself for 2019. Of course, these elections are, in a sense, a run-up to yeah. that and if they somehow if in that narrow thing it, it, it veers in their direction that's going to help them of course mm. and if it veers in the direction of the congress it's going to help the congress party mm. as well and and to bring in the rss here yeah. you may find the rss much more active than it thought it was going to it was going to have to be mm. and then you see that now people tell me mm. uh, in rajasthan where the rss is extremely active now trying to get the voters out Mm. and get them to the polls mm. and it's it, it very elaborate in fact one of the strengths of the rss is its organization mm. and the, and what they have provided the bjp it's probably the best organized party in india mm. but that doesn't always you know work for victory it helps but it's not always and, and how do you see the rss doing the same for the bjp uh, when it comes to uh, prime minister narendra modi and the 2019 elections if you're telling telling us mm. that in the rajasthan elections the rss has increased it's its working yes if if these elections go badly for the bjp the rss will be you know prompted to work more you know more enthusiastically mm. for the bjp mm. they will because they don't want to see the BJP lose. Mm. They're not always enthusiastic about what, what Mohan Bhagwat, the head of the RSS, has called the cult of personality. Mm. But that aside, if you read the last Vijay Dashmi speech that he gave, and that for the RSS, that is the kind of state of the union mm. for the RSS for the year. This last one is interesting because it was different from the couple of years before when it was very critical of Modi. This last one was all praise, hmm. all praise of Modi. You know, and I must admit, I got it totally wrong. People kept asking me beforehand, um, you know, how is this Vijay Dashmi speech going to be, because it's so important, and I said incorrectly, it's going to be critical of Modi like the previous three. It wasn't, not at all. It was total praise. And, and that already tells you something that with the high command in the RSS is thinking, ah, mm. we've got to support this man and this party because he may not be doing all that well. And Rajasthan is a good case of that. But you know, the, the larger question here is, these elections are two trends. You know, at the beginning, the election was being fought on the issue of governance by Bharti Janta Party. Uh, fifth, uh, ten days before, because the run-up to the election has been long this time around, Krishna, it has been more than six months that both the parties have been campaigning. But Dr. Anderson, the larger issue here is that any adverse result, would that mean that the Bharti Janta Party and RS or the Narendra Modi will rely more and more on principally emotive issues like Ayodhya, uh, cow protection, or any of the issues which is highly emotive rather than uh, good governance on which he fought election because Vajpayee fought in Shining India in 2004 pre-pawning it and he lost. Right, uh, I'm going to hold that, uh, 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 Walter please hold the thought, uh, we need to uh, inform the audience uh, something uh, quite immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, the numbers which I showed you are exit polls, they are just projections, keep in mind. Counting day is on the 11th of December, every election there are exit polls conducted by several agencies, but how accurate are these exit polls? It's a sort of a guesstimate of sorts, so to speak. Now, here's a quick look at a few instances when exit polls went horribly wrong. In 2016, in the state of Tamil Nadu, political pundits projected a victory for the DMK Congress Alliance. But come result day, tables were completely turned. Incumbent AIA DMK, led by uh, former Chief Minister of uh, Tamil Nadu, Jay Jayalalitha, returned to power with a whopping majority. Similarly, in the case of Bihar in the year 2015, exit polls projected a neck-and-neck -neck fight with 122 seats for Nitish Kumar-led Grand Alliance and the projection was that a resurgent BJP will give them a tough fight. But the result was way off the mark, not completely wrong, but way off the mark. Nitish Kumar's Grand Alliance won 178 seats to form the government. 
Now, just last year, in the Goa Assembly elections, exit polls projected that BJP's tally would be higher than the Congress party. On result day, the Congress surprised the BJP by bagging 17 seats. BJP bagged only 13 but managed to form the government by forging alliances. But there are times when exit polls are dead accurate. Like in the case of the year 2014's general elections of India. Exit polls predicted a unanimous verdict for the BJP led by Narendra Modi. It also projected that BJP would get its highest ever tally and that's exactly what happened. BJP led the NDA, National Democratic Alliance, to the general election victory and that too, a landslide. That's right. Uh, so the exit polls that we showed you have so far given a verdict that is barely a verdict because it's split right down the middle in all the big states, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh and uh, Telangana is projected to be the TRS of the Telangana Rashtra Samiti is fourth, at least from the exit poll uh, projection. So let's now quickly take you through uh, all those exit poll numbers. Gentlemen, if you can hold on for a second for all the viewers uh, who are just uh, uh, tuning in to us. Uh, World is One is uh, compiling for you all the big exit poll numbers that we've got and we're telling you what the average of these exit polls are and let's begin with the biggest state that's gone to election of the five states that have gone to uh, polls and that's uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, Madhya Pradesh has about uh, 230 seats, that's the largest state assembly, not uh, parliament uh, and this is the four exit polls that we have uh, taken into consideration. Look at these numbers again. 111, 13, 94, 126, 118, 105, and 126, 89. Now, if you average them out and make a poll of polls, we get 112 BJP, 108 Congress, 10 others. That is a split house, ladies and gentlemen, as far as the state of Madhya Pradesh is concerned, where we have a chief minister who's been chief minister for three consecutive terms and is now aiming for the fourth term. Next, we have Rajasthan, where Vasundra Raje is of the BJP is the chief minister. She is the incumbent chief minister. We've taken three exit polls. 63 130 BJP Congress, 93 130, and 85 105 Rajasthan. All exit polls when you put together a poll of polls 109 for the Congress, 80 for the BJP, 10 for others. Congress looks to snap back Rajasthan from BJP. And then comes Chhattisgarh, a popular chief minister, Dr. Raman Singh. Four exit polls that you've taken BJP Congress, 26 60, 52 35, 44 40, and 46 35. When you put them together and you get the poll of polls 43 Congress, 42 BJP. Five others. Of the three big states, two seem to be divided houses. Keep in mind, exit polls, projections, estimates. December 11th is when we'll know the exact numbers. We also have the poll of polls for the state of Telangana, where BJP is a marginal player. So there you have 227 BJP Congress, 541 BJP Congress, 0737 BJP Congress. In TRS, come going anywhere between 85, 65 and 66, 66 to 85, that's the range, that's the reason why TRS, when you sort of average all those exit polls out, 70, 36 for the Congress, 5 for the BJP and 8 for others. Uh, Mizoram is another state that has gone to polls and uh, where in Mizoram, it, BJP is almost uh, a non-existent uh, player. The question is whether BJP can make its mark and win a seat or two when it comes to the fifth state that's gone to polls. That's uh, Mizoram and with that uh, we've completely run out of time here on this edition of uh, Poll of Polls here ladies and gentlemen. Uh, make sure you tune into World is One on the 11th of December when we'll be bringing you non-stop coverage with the best analysis and the graphics possible of what's going to happen with the election day results of five states which is being touted as the semi-finals to the 2019 general elections and an indicator of whether the current government and its Prime Minister Narendra Modi will come back to power or not. Thank you so much for watching.